All right, then, while the Communication Workers Union has served the SABC with a notice to strike, the embattled public broadcaster is aiming to retrench at least 300 employees. It says this is to reduce the bloated wage bill. But unions want the SABC to find alternative ways to cut costs and to avoid the job bloodbath. So to discuss this further, we're joined by Aubrey Shabalala from the Communication Workers Union. Mr. Shabalala, good to have you and good morning to you. Now, I understand that the strike uh, is taking place. You did also mention it will be vital a motorcade obviously to observe you know the restrictions and to ensure social distancing uh, why this decision to eventually strike well thank you very much uh, good morning to you and uh, viewership uh, we took the decision to resume our strike action after we have realized that uh, SAPC management is not really uh, willing to engage meaningfully and when we say meaningful we say that they are turnaround strategy has got nothing to do really with uh, making sure that SAPC is sustainable, self-sustainable. Uh, it's got nothing to do really about uh, making sure that it's compatible. So SAPC is um, going to engage in this turnaround strategy purely to cut numbers of workers. Uh, ultimately, that will weaken SAPC in-house content building. That's the first point. And largely, SAPC will depend on outsourcing its work. So in the, in the near future, SAPC will be spending more than what it is now. So it means that um, it will not be self-sustainable. So that's one of our problems that we have. But the second point that is most critical is that till to this date, SAPC failed to give us a list of the affected workers. Because um, if we don't know who is affected, we will be not be able to monitor correctly uh, the SAPC retrenchment process. So what happens now that everyone is getting letters and uh, we are not so sure whether even that 303 number is still the very same number that uh, SAPC said it will retrench. Bearing in mind that in November it said 400, but we mm. only established during the extension time that more than 800 people received letters during November. So are you saying the SABC is misleading its workers and misleading South Africans by saying that it will only retrench just a little bit over 300 when in fact uh, the number you're saying right now that it may be exceeding that 300? Absolutely. Uh, they, if they had nothing to hide, they would have given us that list. But uh, of course, they are misleading all of us, misleading Parliament and everyone else. That's why they remain so stubborn not to engage anyone. And that's why they want to forge ahead even during this time uh, where everyone is saying, let's put a monitorium on retrenchment. It's a, a difficult times under the economy. Uh, SAPC wants to forge ahead. What is the rush all about? The rush is all about themselves making sure that the companies that are standing on the side wings to benefit through risk retrenchment as the outsource or independent uh, producers are going to benefit as soon as possible. So what is then your plan as the Communication Workers Union come protest day? I understand you're marching to the union buildings. What happens when you arrive there? Well, we have written to the head of the state, uh, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, to say uh, he must come and receive the memorandum. Um, it could be him or any other senior official. Uh, we are intending to hand uh, that memorandum to the head of the state because one of the things that the public broadcaster is not a private institution. We will not allow the CEO nor the chairperson of the board to turn that institution to their own spazzle shop. So if the public civil society has spoken about or against the retrenchment political parties have spoken against the retrenchment uh, even the parliament portfolio committee has spoken against uh, the retrenchment trade unions are doing the same and uh, you find that only a few individuals not less not more than five people insist that the retrenchment is the only way so if somebody wants to privatize sapc for their self gains we have to go to the head of the state and we are saying to the head of the state, can you intervene? Because these are the cities who are saying that their institution is not correctly run. And you cannot have the head of the state mom about that, inform, uh, that uh, situation. So that's why we are taking it to the president. Right. Before I let you go, Mr. Shabalala, if you could just briefly clarify then your demands and summarize your demands that you've written, obviously, within this memorandum that you're handing over. We are clear, our, our demand is first to, to stop the turnaround strategy in total. So it's not only about retrenchment, 
we, we are demanding that the structure that SAPC is bringing about of making a combo of radios, which taking us back to the Bantu stand where they are going to marginalize uh, some indigenous, indigenous languages. We, we are calling for a stop to that. We are calling for a stop to the use of the most outsourcing uh, uh, institutions so that SAPC can keep on paying private sector. That's the second point. At that point, we are saying that erosion of permanent jobs replacing with freelance jobs, which are not necessary public jobs, it must come to a stop. But ultimately, we are calling for the board to be removed and SAPC must be under administration. We'll leave it right there. Thank you so much. That was Aubrey Shabalala, Communication Workers Union Secretary General.